Hello and welcome to Ogmore by Sea Churches, reading the Bible together. My name is Dom, I'm the pastor of the church. Thank you for joining me. I'm sorry that this isn't being live streamed, having technical difficulties yet again. There's something mysterious going on about Mondays and I haven't figured it out yet. Anyway, we are in Genesis chapter 24 as we continue to read through Genesis together throughout the month of January. And we've been asking these questions. What did you learn about Jesus, the Father and the Spirit? What did you learn about yourself? As, as the word of God uh, is like a mirror to our lives. Uh, how were you challenged? How were you encouraged? How can you love God and how can you love your neighbour as yourself? These are all things that we ought to be asking ourselves as we read through the scriptures. Please do comment down below what you've been learning, anything that strikes you uh, as surprising. And please do ask any questions and I'll do my very best to answer them or point you in directions of better answers. Brilliant. Let's pray and then let's dive in. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll be with each one of us as we read your word now. We humble ourselves before you and ask that you would be with us and that you would speak to us graciously in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said, let me just check that the mic is on. Yes, it is. Right. Sorry about that. Okay. Verse 2. He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Then the servant left, taking with him ten of his master's camels, loaded with all kinds of good things from his master. He set out for Aram, Neharaim, and made his way to the town of Nahor. He had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time the women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. I love this servant of Abraham and I think this is a wonderful prayer. And I often make this prayer a framework for my prayer when I've when I've got a task to do I I say Lord God Father and God of uh, Abraham and God of the heavens and the earth please give me success today <laughs> because success is ultimately in his hands it's in his control and please show kindness not only not to my master Abraham but who do we serve as Christians we want uh, kindness shown to the Lord Jesus Christ. We want him to succeed and us to succeed only as we are doing his will. And then it's a very practical prayer and he's asking that the Lord would graciously go above and beyond in provision. Anyway, verse 15, before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother, Nahor. The woman was very beautiful a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her, the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, until they have had enough to drink. 
So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to, do, to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring weighing a, a becker and two gold bracelets weighing ten shekels. Then he asked, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I'm the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, bore to Nahor. And she added, We have plenty of straw and fodder as well as a room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. It must be so exciting for this guy as the plan of God is unfolding before his eyes in this spectacular way. Verse 28, the young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now, Rebecca had a brother named Laban, and he hurried out to the man at the spring. As soon as he had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms and had heard Rebecca tell what the man said to her, he went out to the man and found him standing by the camels near the spring. Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, he said. Why are you standing out here? I have prepared the house and a place for the camels a place for the camels. So the man went to the house and the camels were unloaded. Straw and fodder were brought for the camels and water for him and his men to wash their feet. Then food was set before him. But he said, I'll not eat until I have told you what I have to say. Then tell us, Laban said. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master abundantly and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, male and female servants and camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son in her old age, and he has given him everything he owns. And my master made me swear an oath and said, You must not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but go to my father's family and to my own clan and get a wife for my son. Then I asked my master, what if the woman will not come back with me? He replied, the Lord before whom I have walked faithfully will send his angel with you and make your journey at success so that you can get a wife for my son from my own clan and from my father's family. You will be released from my oath, oath if when you go to my clan, they refuse to give her to you. Then you will be released from my oath. When I came to the spring today, I said, Lord God of my master Abraham, if you will, please grant success to the journey on which I have come. See, I'm standing beside this spring. If a young woman comes out to draw water and I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she says to me, drink and I'll draw water for your camels too. Let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water and I said to her, please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, drink and I'll water your camels too. So I drank and she watered the camels also. I, all, I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Milcah bore to him. Then I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will, show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me. And if not, tell me, so I may know which way to turn. Laban and Bethuel answered, This is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or another. Here is Rebekah, take her and go, and let her become the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard what they said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out gold and silver jewellery and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave costly gifts to a brother and to a mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up the next morning, he said, send me on my way to my master. But her brother and her mother replied, let the young woman remain with us 10 days or so, then you may go. But he said to them, do not detain me. Now that the Lord has granted success to my journey, send me on my way so I may go to my master. Then they said, let's call the young woman and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, 
Will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister, Rebecca, on her way, along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the cities of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her attendants got ready and mounted the camels and went back with the man. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac had come from Beer Leia Roy, for he was living in the Negev. He went out to the field one evening to meditate, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He's my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebecca. So she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Chapter 25. Abraham had taken another wife, whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishpak, and Shua. Jokshan was the father of Sheba and Dedan. The descendants of Dedan were the Asherites, the Letuashites, and the Lumites. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephah, Hanok, Abida, and Aldea. All these were descendants of Keturah. Abraham left, not, left everything he owned to Isaac. But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Abraham lived 175 years, and Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah near Mamre, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar, the Hittite, the field Abraham bought from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who then lived near Beer Leah Roy. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son Ishmael, whom Sarah's slave, Hagar the Egyptian, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael listed in the order of their birth. Nebaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Kedah, Abdil, Adbil, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hada, Tima, Jitur, Nafish, and Kedema. These were the sons of Ishmael, and these are the names of the twelve tribal rulers according to their settlements and camps. Ishmael lived a hundred and thirty-seven years. He breathed his last and died, and he was gathered to his people. His descendants settled in the area of Havilah to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt as you go toward Asher, and they lived in hostility toward all the tribes related to them. It's interesting, the genealogies, uh, when they seem to diverge from the line of promise and then the other lines, it seems like the other lines precede what the names of those and the structure of those in the line of promise. And you see that in the sons of Adam and the sons of Cain. There are similar names, but the names <laughs> precede in the, the line of Cain. And Ishmael had 12 tribes come from him, and it is down another couple of generations when uh, there are 12 tribes of, of Jacob. I just find it interesting. I don't know where there's something in that. Anyway, there's a thought. Verse 19. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel the Aramean, from Padan Aram, and sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. Very briefly, uh, Isaac received this promise that through this family line the whole earth will be blessed and yet this uh, amazing story of how Rebecca was Isaac's wife and the fulfillment of all the promises there and yet Rebecca was childless. Um, it's interesting that she, she was chosen to be uh, Isaac's wife and yet she couldn't bear children uh, but Isaac prayed and it's interesting how 
our prayers and God's predetermined will are intermingled. So we have a responsibility. Uh, it's not just trust God and just be resigned to what God will do, God will do. No, we are called to pray in line with our Father's will. So she went to inquire of the Lord. Verse 23, the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. That's very important for the story that's to come. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Jacob, Jacob's name could mean deceiver. Um, and it's similar to grasping the heel. It's that kind of physical imagery that has more to it, the connotations attached to it. And he's certainly sneaky here in this passage. And yet what is focused upon is Esau not really regarding his birthright at all, despising it. He's selling it for some lentil stew. It really is surprising, isn't it? As the firstborn, he would get uh, the lion's share of the inheritance and one would assume that the promises of God, the covenant promises, would be passed down to him and his line uh, if it were not for the prophecy given to uh, given to Rebecca. The older will serve the younger. Now, uh, chapter 26, now there was a famine in the land, besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gera. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, well, let's just remember who is the Lord that appears. No one has ever seen God. God, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. That's speaking about God, the God the Son, the eternal word of God, Jesus. So the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees and my, in my instructions. So Isaac stayed in Gera. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she's my sister because he was afraid to say she's my wife. He thought the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she's beautiful. I wonder where he picked up that kind of behaviour from. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she is really your wife. Why did you say she's my sister? Isaac answered him, because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done? One of the men might have slept with your wife and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, anyone who harms this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us. You've become too powerful for us. 
So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gera, where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gera quarrelled with those of Isaac and said, The water is ours! So he named the well Essek, because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarrelled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarrelled over it. He named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent and there his servants dug a well. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gera with ah Ahuzath, his personal advisor, and Phicol, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, Why have you come to me since you were hostile to me and sent me away? He answered, We saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said, There ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you, that you will do us no harm, just as we do, did not harm you, but always treated you well and sent you away peacefully. And now you are blessed by the Lord. Isaac then made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning the men swore an oath to each other, and Isaac sent them on their way, and they went away peacefully. That day Isaac's servant came and told him about the well they had dug. They said, We found water. He called it Sheba, and to this day the name of the town has been Beersheba. When Esau was forty years old, he married Judith, daughter of Beeri, the Hittite, and also Basimath, daughter of Elon, the Hittite, they were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah. It's well worth looking up the, the names of these places. They often reflect what's going on in the narrative. Chapter 27. When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son. Here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat, so that I may eat, so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now Rebecca was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebecca said to her son Jacob, Look. I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, Bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat, so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats, so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat, so that he may give you his blessing before he dies. Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, but my brother Esau is a hairy man while I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebekah took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with goat skins. Then, he, then she handed to her son Jacob the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father? Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you've told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, 
How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God gave me success, he replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognise him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau, so he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my son Esau? he asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, My son, bring me some of your game to eat, so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you heaven's dew and earth's richness, an abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him, and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. Then he said to him, My father, please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac asked him, Who are you? I am your son, he said. He answered, Your firstborn, Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came in and I blessed him and indeed he will be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? This is the second time he, is, he has taken advantage of me. He took my birthright and now he's taken my blessing. Then he asked, haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I've made him lord over you and have made all his relatives his, all his, relatives his servants and I have sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, do you only have one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him. He said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. When Rebekah was told what her older son Esau had said, she sent for her younger son Jacob and said to him, Your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. Now then, my son, do what I say. Flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay with him for a while until your brother's fury subsides. When your brother is no longer angry with you and forgets what you did to him, I'll send word for you to come back here. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm disgusted with living because of these Hittite women. If Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this land, from Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him. Then he commanded him, Do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to Padan Aram, to the house of your mother's father, Bethuel. Take a wife for yourself there, from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your number until you become a mighty community, be, until you become a community of peoples. May he give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham, so that you may take possession of the land where you now reside as a foreigner, the land God promised to Abraham. Then Isaac sent Jacob on his way, and he went to Padan Aram, to Laban, son of Bethuel the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, who was the mother of Jacob and Esau. 
Now Esau learned that Isaac had blessed Jacob and had sent him to Padan Aram to take a wife from there, and that when he blessed him, he commanded him, Do not marry a Canaanite woman, and that Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and had gone to Padan Aram. Esau then realised how displeasing the Canaanite women were to his father Isaac, so he went to Ishmael and married Mahalath, the sister of Nebioth, Nebioth, the daughter of Ishmael, son of Abraham, in addition to the wives he already had. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. How tired do you have to be to take a rock and use it as your pillow and fall asleep in an instant? Verse 12. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will give me, sorry, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taken, taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Is Jacob making a bargain with the Lord here? Is he trying to grab his heel in this instance, turn things to his own way, manipulating the situation to better himself? Certainly in his character, isn't it? How are we doing? Let's do another chapter. Chapter 29. Then Jacob continued on his journey and came to the land of the eastern peoples. There he saw a well in the open country with three flocks of sheep lying near, lying near it because the flocks were watered from that well. The stone over the mouth of the well was large. When all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone away from the well's mouth and water the sheep. Then they would return the stone to its place over the mouth of the well. Jacob asked the shepherds, My brothers, where are you from? We're from Haran, they replied. He said to them, Do you know Laban, Nahor's grandson? Yes, we know him, they answered. And Jacob answered them, Is he well? Yes, he is, they said. And here comes his daughter Rachel with the sheep. Look, he said, the sun is still high. It is not time for the flocks to be gathered. Water the sheep and take them back to pasture. We can't, they replied, until all the flocks are gathered and the stone has been rolled away from the mouth of the well. Then we will water the sheep. While he was still talking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherd. When Jacob saw Rachel, daughter of his uncle Laban and Laban's sheep, he went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and began to weep aloud. He had told Rachel that he was a relative of her father and a son of Rebekah. So she ran and told her father. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he hurried to meet him. He embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his home. And there Jacob told him all these things. Then Laban said to him, You are my own flesh and blood. 
After Jacob had stayed with him for a whole month, Laban said to him, Just because you are a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work for you seven years in return for your daughter, your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It's better that I give her to you than to some other man. Stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife. My time is completed and I want to make love to her. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. But when evening came, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. And Jacob made love to her. And Laban gave his servant Zilpah to his daughter as her attendant. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Laban replied, it is not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week, then we will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. And Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah, and then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Laban gave his servant Bil Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as her attendant. Jacob made love to Rachel also, and his love for Rachel was greater than his love for Leah. And he worked for Laban another seven years. The deceiver was deceived. When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, It is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, Because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. Again she conceived, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, Now at last my husband will become attached to me, because I have borne him three sons. So he named so he named so he was named Levi. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, This time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. We're going to put a pin in it, put a bookmark there. Well done for sticking with that. Please do comment down below questions, encouragements, what you thought was weird. Genesis is full of uh, things that are strange to us, and yet they are all so foundational to our understanding of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the church. Right, God bless. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye for now.